Sure, here we go. So, uh, number one, can you please introduce yourself and your affiliation? Hey, it's Bill Nye, the science guy here. I'm executive director of the Planetary Society, and I want to wish everybody a happy Yuri's Night uh, 2011. Now, uh, Yuri Gagarin was the first guy to orbit the Earth, and Sputnik left October 4th, 1957. Uh, then Gagarin was 1961, so this is the 50th anniversary of a guy going around the world. By the way, had a little trouble at the end, so he had to jump out of his out of his capsule and parachute to the Earth. He's a brave guy. This is a, this is a worthy celebration. I got interested in uh, space science because I grew up with the Cold War and the disgrace of the moon. But I stayed interested in it because I became a mechanical engineer. I worked at a big airplane company, Boeing, and uh, I had Carl Sagan for astronomy. He's a famous astronomer, and so now. I'm executive director of the Planetary Society. It's very exciting. It's a, it's a big night, big week. How would you say the uh, first 50 years of human, human spaceflight has changed society? And you might have to be a little louder than the crowd. Yeah. So the first 50 years of uh, spaceflight with humans has changed the world. I mean, uh, because humans got so excited about going to the moon, Humans went on to make all kinds of amazing satellites, including Global Positioning System that we all know and love. Every time you watch the news uh, from the other side of the world, you're watching it because of the success of space exploration and uh, human-made satellites. Uh, space exploration has changed the world, and that's the last 50 years. You know, in terms of human history, 50 years isn't very long. So the next 50 years, with information technology being the way it is, you've got to expect the world is going to be a very exciting, much more connected place. It's, it really is. It's, it is the most amazing time to be alive in that respect. Thank you. That also obviously covered the next 50 years. Um, so the question is, how did you get your start in the space industry, or how did you sort of get pulled into that part of, uh, part of your career? So I grew up during the Cold War, and I watched people land on the moon and so on. I watched uh, the Cold War end, and people kept exploring space. They kept flying around, uh, built a shuttle, a space station, and meanwhile, people all over the world got involved. There was no European Space Agency when I was a kid. There was no Indian Space Research Organization, no Chinese Space Agency, it's very, uh, Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. None of these things existed. It's all come to be, come to be, it's all come to be in the last couple of decades, last 20 years. Just think what the next 50 years are going to be. It's going to be, if I may, unrecognizable in, in a cool way. And uh, you, you said something at the beginning, but could you say a few words for people that are around the world that are going to be celebrating Yuri's Night 2011? So, uh, happy Yuri's Night 2011. You know, Yuri Gagarin circled the Earth above the atmosphere, had to jump out of his capsule on the way down in 1961, so it was 50 years ago, which seems like a long time, but in the course of human history, it's a very short time. So, happy Yuri's night. Um, thank you, and uh, so these are just a couple of extra questions. Uh, what would you say is your passion for space exploration? You mentioned sort space of exploration. Space exploration brings out the best in us, brings out the best in humans. You get humans exploring space, to all sorts of innovations, all kinds of brave decisions, and it has changed the world. We all take for granted our global positioning systems and our newscasts from the other side of the world, let alone our weather reports. If the weather report is off six hours, people start complaining. You wouldn't have any of that without the, uh, the worldwide effort, the worldwide success in space exploration. You mentioned uh, Carl Sagan, but uh, I don't know if it's the same answer to this question, but who's the space figure or someone you most admire during your career? Uh, Carl Sagan would be the guy I most admire, but the people I've worked with on the Mars Exploration Rovers, uh, Spirit and Opportunity, those people are pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, everybody, everybody who makes spacecraft that are successful are really remarkable. The, uh, Japanese engineers who made the first successful solar sail, Icarus, that is really, that is really innovative. It's, it's, it's going to change the world. How do you think we can best educate the public about space and get them involved? Well, for me, right now, my, I'm going to work hard to get young people involved. These would be people that are 10 years old or so. 
Uh, you have to get people excited about science when they're real young or they don't get the so-called lifelong passion, which I got. Everybody, everybody who works in space now got this passion and everything. So uh, I'm working to involve real young people so that we can, dare I say it, change the world. And so Yuri's Night is, a, is an outstanding time to look back and look forward. 50th anniversary of human space flight. Very exciting will be the next 50 years. Do you plan on going into space? Well, I applied to be an astronaut several times, uh, but I'm now of a certain age, and I don't expect to be that wealthy. Nevertheless, a man can dream. If the opportunity comes up, I'll, I'm going. And uh, one final question here. Um, what piece of advice would you give to someone who wants to get involved in the space industry? If you want to get involved in space, if you want to get involved in space, don't grow up to be a cowboy or a doctors and lawyers and such. Grow up to be an engineer. Aerospace engineering, fluid mechanics, that's what, how I got involved. And of course now, everything's getting so miniaturized in such a successful, fantastic way through the, through the success of modern material science and uh, computer science. It's, get involved in science and math. You can change the world. And I had a, an extra question that was someone asked uh, about the, the history of bow ties with the uh, with you and if you wanted to share that. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I started wearing bow ties when I was in high school. The boys waited on the girls. We were waiters at the girls' athletic banquet, which is this thing where the girls give out awards to each other for field hockey and lacrosse and volleyball and so on. And uh, I said to everybody, hey, if we're going to be waiters, we should wear bow ties. And my father was really uh, very good with knots. Just got me excited on the elegance of bow ties. You know, they don't, they don't slip into your suit when you <laughs> lean over. They don't, they don't flop into your flask. One day, oh yes, bow ties, they'll all be doing it. They're all going to be doing it. <laughs>